What is up YouTube and all my fish keeping friends? Today we're going to set up a Tetra breeding tank. Don't go anywhere. So I'm up here in the QT room in their quarantine uh, room here in the house. We are going to set up a breeding tank for tetra fish. This is going to be for the blue tetras, the nano blue tetras. It's a Titocharx tamba patensis. Uh, I actually had the opportunity to collect these fish when I was in the Madre de Dios River Basin in southern Peru uh, in 2017. I was there on a collecting trip. It was just a really fun experience to be there, but it was awesome to be able to bring this fish back. So this fish was collected in the Tambapata River, which is part of the Madre de Dios River Basin in southern Peru. Uh, unfortunately, this area of Peru is probably one of the most heavily mined areas for gold and is really really unfortunate because the waters are tainted with mercury and it's just the fish are all dying and the location where I collected these fish is probably non-existent at this point and it's really unfortunate that there might not be much of a chance for anybody to get these fish in the future. So the natural environment in which we were finding these fish were at the banks of the river. They would hide underneath of the uh, the grasses that hang over the edge and hang underneath of, of floating plants and, and leaves at the surface of the water. So it's a very interesting courting behavior for these fish. The male will actually inseminate the female internally and then she goes off by herself and will lay the sticky eggs on the underside of the floating plants and leaves and on other hard surfaces in the aquarium. So I'm gonna go ahead and take you guys along with me. We're gonna go around the house. I'm gonna find all of the parts and materials that I need to put this tank together and we'll get it on the rack in the living room. So out here in the garage with all of the extra tanks ready to go, uh, I have this tank that I've painted. I painted three sides of it. Now this will be the front of course and they'll be able to go to the back side of this tank and get uh, a place to hide out. All the tanks on the rack uh, are painted on either side. Okay, so I have here in these two buckets the substrate that I'm going to use. This is the substrate mix that Amber has been using for a while. Uh, this is a mixture of kitty litter, natural, uh, unscented kitty litter mixed with EcoComplete and worm castings. So that's gonna go down here at the bottom of the tank. So I have here in this bucket, just a mixture of sands. This is a lot of different carob sea sand products mixed together. This is a really nice mix and I'm gonna go ahead and cap this substrate with it. I am doing this one-handed. I am doing this one-handed without a tripod. Now, I would recommend that you wear a mask and you do not breathe this kitty litter or pool sand, both of which can cause you problems with your lungs. Uh, but that should be just enough right there. I'm gonna spread it out. Now the big important thing to remember when you're working with this kitty litter is that you want to make sure that you hydrate, saturate and hydrate this kitty litter before you put the sand cap on it and then you try to add water because it'll be all kinds of air bubbles. They're gonna bubble up to the stuff it's gonna destroy the sand cap and everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some water in here and we'll get the sand in here. Okay, so the kitty litter and EcoComplete worm casting mix is saturated just enough. It's not all sloppy or anything like that. So we have this Carib C uh, mix here of sand. We go ahead and get this in the tank. You see that it's even saturated. It wicked and soaked up the water that I put in there for the, um, the kitty litter mix. And so this is ready for a little bit of a hardscape. I'm not gonna get crazy on hardscape for this tank because it's really for breeding. So I'm gonna get a couple of rocks and uh, we have everything here in the garage. There's tanks on this side and we have a collection of hardscape. Some really cool rocks here. This is one of the rocks that I collected when I did that video with Amber when we went out and collected off of Lake Champlain. This rock is going to make it into the scape and I'm going to do something with it. I'll sit in there for now. I added a couple of other rocks, uh, just a few more rocks into here. Uh, I added a little bit more sand around them to support them just a tiny bit. Uh, so that's there's a reflection but that's what it's going to look like from the front. So I'm going to go ahead and get this tank in the living room on the rack. We'll get some water in it and see what it looks like. So 
So I have all the elements together here that I'm going to use to scape this tank. I'm going to go ahead and start out with the slate stone that I collected from Lake Champlain. I also have about four or five pieces of Anubias to work with, as well as some hornwort and some duckweed. I have some more duckweed and I have some salvinia as well. Uh, and to top it all off, I think it's really important to add a nice little selection of dried botanicals, a little bit of almond leaves, some banana leaf, maybe a few alder cones as well as some tea from boiling the botanicals and sterilizing them. Okay so I wanted to keep this scape pretty simple. I used three main rocks and I'm gonna go ahead and take all of this slate stone and I'm gonna sprinkle it around the edge of the main rocks and then just slowly scatter out away from that and trickle the rocks out around the tank but um, I'm not trying to get too crazy with this. Once again this is more of a breeding tank. I just want to create some dither from the front and the back of the tank so the fish can go to the back for safety and feel comfortable and when they want to come and eat and they want to hang out in front of humans in the front of the tank they can okay so now I'm just gonna go ahead and add these plants pretty freely I'm not really worried about it uh, I'm not gonna bury the rhizome of the Anubias because that's you just don't do that it's gonna rot so I'm just gonna go ahead and just scatter these Anubias and let them lay where they want to they'll root they'll attach to the rocks or to the sand if they choose to uh, on top of that I'm gonna go ahead and add a big ball of horn and then a whole bunch of duckweed. Uh, this is going to make for a nice floating uh, cover, a surface on top of the tank, which is going to make the fish feel very comfortable. So now that I have everything in the aquarium, uh, I have the water half full still before I push the tank all the way back into the rack. And I just wanted you to see the fence and see how I have it set up there on the front third of the tank to keep all of the hornwort and the floating plants in the back of the tank. And it also creates uh, a surface area, an area with a little bit of water uh, surface tension where I can sprinkle a little bit of Hikari first bites or other powdered foods and the fry can eat and kind of hang out in that area uh, it's gonna be kind of like a little bit of a nursery and of course last but not least I'm gonna add a whole bunch of dried botanicals I'm gonna go ahead and tear up these almond leaves into a bunch of little pieces I like it that way better uh, especially in a smaller scape it just scales better if you tear the leaves up into little pieces and it also just helps uh, make for a denser bed of leaf litter that lays a little flatter on the bottom of the substrate there's a few things that these dried botanicals are gonna do for this aquarium and this breeding tank setup uh, these botanicals are going to slowly over time break down and buffer the pH, soften the water and lower the pH a little bit to make it more acidic. They're also going to just add beneficial tannins to the water. They're going to make the fish feel more comfortable. And on top of that, they're going to be a home for all kinds of microorganisms, infusoria, just little microorganisms that the baby fish that the fry, the microscopic fry, are going to make their first meals out of. And to top it all off, we're going to pour that tannin tea right into the tank and get some tint and color to that aquarium right now. It's going to dissipate a little bit and uh, it's going to become a little bit more transparent yet tea colored over the next couple of weeks with water changes. <laughs> okay, this tank is super, super cloudy and full of tint still. It doesn't look so awesome right now, but I tell you what, the fish are going to enjoy it because they're going to feel hidden and they're going to feel safe. Uh, and they're going to be very happy and it's going to make them want to spawn in here. So I'm going to go ahead and give this aquarium some time to age, to cycle. Uh, we'll do a couple of water changes which will lower the tannins just a little bit. We'll see how the pH changes over the next couple of weeks. And then eventually I'm going to add a small group of about 7 to 10 blue tetras into this aquarium and we'll get them spawning once again. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Thank you to all of you that like, comment, and share. And remember guys, keep your tanks clean, your fish fed and have fun. You can do it. It's easy. I can't do it all, Dave. <laughs> Look at your baby. Look at you. Dwayne. You stay in the water, Dwayne. It's where you belong. <laughs>